Ready? Want to have another prayer? I've been praying constantly. Okay, me too. Me too. We're here for a couple of reasons and one purpose. One of the reasons is because you requested it. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons is because we needed to. Uh, one of the questions I have to ask you is, are you recording this? That's none of your business. If you're recording it, we're going to excuse you. Garn, there is a state law which specifically says that anyone can record anything. Unless we ask you not to. No, I think you ought to check it. I do. I think you ought to check it again. Because I, I have a right to record this. If you're recording it, we're going to excuse you. So you go off. It's off. Yes, I will leave it off. I will not turn it back on. Any other recording device? Nope. We're here for one purpose. That is apostasy. We're not going down the path of all the other things that have been an irritation to you. We apologize for our part in any of those. Um, we're here for one reason. That's to decide whether you're in apostasy or whether you're not. So we're not going to have a lot, I don't imagine it would be a long deal. I mean, the, the question really is, are you, we'll, have, we'll deal with that one in here. Um, what do you want us to do with the witnesses? Bring them in. You want them in there right from the get-go? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> we want you to cooperate because we're, we're not, like I say, we're not going down this other, these other paths. Oh, I'm, I'm not looking back at all. Just apostasy only? I'm not looking back at all. Okay. We're going to talk about apostasy. Okay. On that basis, let's go in. As a general rule, uh, Sister Earl, we normally just deal with the uh, member. Okay. We, we are in this together. I would like her to come in and take notes, especially since you've had me turn off my recorder. It's out of the norm. Is that okay? I don't think so. We're doing this by the book. By the book? We haven't done anything by the book since... Oh, I'm not going to go back there. Don't go there. You're welcome to come in for the decision, but typically we just meet with... Uh, the member and whoever he's called as witnesses. That's the protocol. Okay. You know, it does, it does puzzle me. Uh, but just to be honest with you, I, I look at Jesus Christ's life. And it didn't matter whether he was with his friends, lifting them up and communing with them, or whether he was with the sinners, calling them to repentance, or whether he was among the most evil uh, of, the, of the religious fanatics condemning them. Not one thing he ever did was behind closed doors. What is it, I'm just, I'm just curious, Garn, what is it that the church or that you personally would like to hide? Nothing. This is, this is my hearing, and I'm the one that's been accused. And the handbook, which you said you have, said no recordings? No. The handbook also said that it's not to be distributed to me. Says no, no, it does not. It says that you should not record it. it <coughs> and there's any, anything in that handbook does not apply to me. I've got it right here. Video record, video or audio, audio recording should not be. Should not be. And who is that too? You wouldn't even give me a copy of that. I don't even know if I have the most the current members, version. The members typically don't have the handbook. All right. So that's direction to you. It's instruction to you. And we're using, <coughs> we're interpreting this as being instruction for the disciplinary council. We don't record, we don't make videos. Okay. What's that? You saw me turn it off, Garn. Come on. I don't know whether you've got another one. I've got 14, they're all strapped on. Oh. <laughs> 
Let's go in. All right. First of all, brother call, brother Brian. I didn't know you got upgraded. Hi, I don't know you, brother Angus. Hi, and I don't know you, Shane Bolgan. I do know you, Keith Phillips. Keith. Hi. Hi, Brian Wallace. Hi. Hi. Oh, Kirk. I didn't know you were here either. Brian? Brian. Excuse me? Ron Wynn. Hi, Ron. Oh. Todd? That's Howard Weisenberger. Who? Howard. Howard. Weisenberger. Shane, you're. Shane, okay. And I don't know you. Wayne Mallet. Wayne Mallet, okay. Father in heaven, as we humbly bow before thee at the beginning of this council setting, we're grateful for thee and all that thou does for us. And we're grateful for our apostles and prophets and our leaders that guide and direct our church and lead us in the paths of righteousness. We're grateful for our state presidency and all that they do for us and their time and energy they spend on our behalf. We're grateful for them. We're grateful for the atonement and the miracle of forgiveness. And please bless us and we'll have thy spirit to be with us tonight that we'll be able to have an open mind, an open heart, and be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish. We know that thou, we love thou, we love thee very much, Father, and we're grateful for all that thou does for us. And it seems we pray for the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Garn, I am not going to play your silly games. I already told you, didn't I? I told you, actually, I've got 14 more recorders on me, didn't I? Okay, we're through. Let's move on. I am not. Why do you need to be told 20 times? I have a few questions I'd just like to ask to get the context around why we're here tonight. Um, you've joined another church. I have not. Baptized into another religion. I have not. Okay. Do you sustain the prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as a prophet, seer, I sustain Jesus Christ as the only prophet and the only single high priest, as he said in his own word. Okay. You sustain the members of the First Presidency and the Court of Twelve Apostles as prophets, seers, and revelators. I trust Jesus' word, which clearly said that after John the Baptist, there would be no more prophets, except for when the Holy Spirit was poured out on all the people. And then it said, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Okay. You sustain the other general authorities and local authorities of the church? I do not. Okay. Do you support, affiliate with, or agree with any group or individual whose teachings or practices are contrary to those teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints? I do affiliate with a group, an organization that teaches the Word of the Bible, but not the lies which have been created by the church over many years. Do you want to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? I do not. So you have the right to uh, explain to this group why that is an apostasy? Why that's not apostasy? Right. I, can, I can easily do that. No, sir, Garn. You said we're going by the by the book, and the book does not give me a time limit. So you're not going to ring a bell. I gave you five minutes. You are not going to ring a bell and say your time is up. So I have I have a statement or two to make. Actually, I'm allowed two statements according to the handbook. 
But why am I not in apostasy? That's a good first question. So let's turn to your own handbook. I found it very interesting as I was going through this. It talks about, specifically about what apostasy is. And apostasy is, and you can let me know if my handbook's outdated because I asked you for an updated one and I didn't get anything, so I assume this is correct. But apostasy is repeatedly to act in clear or open or deliberate opposition to the church or its leaders. To that I'm innocent. The only leader of the church is Jesus Christ. And I have been faithful to him from day one. The second one is to persist in teaching. And, and brethren, I'd, I'd, I'd like you to listen as I read these because there's something important that's missing. First one is, is I have to act in open opposition to men who are appointed to be church leaders. Second is that I have to persist in teaching a church doctrine uh, or information that is not church doctrine after I have been corrected by my bishop or higher authority. Well, I was never corrected and I have not taught anything that is not absolutely true, so I am not guilty. Uh, to continue in, to follow the teachings of apostate sects, such as those that advocate plural marriage, I hope I've not done that, I'm not in apostasy, and formally, or to formally join another church and advocate its teachings, I have not done that either. And so I am not in apostasy. Do you have you have a question or a line of questioning for the witnesses to help you with that argument? Can, can I first ask, six of these are supposed to be here to make sure that I'm treated fairly and six are supposed to be here to assist in making an argument against me. Which six are for me? That's, that's none of your business. <laughs> this is, Brother Earl, this is not a court of law. This is a disciplinary council with the express purpose of protecting the innocent, protecting the name of the church, uh, and that's what we're doing. But it, but it says, it, it doesn't say that it's none of my business. It says that there will be six who are to be my advocates. There are six. Which, which six are they? It's none of your business. It doesn't say that in the handbook. You said we're going to go by the handbook, so can we? We are going by the handbook. That Does the handbook say that I can't? the handbook, we have, we ask you the questions, you respond, you use your witnesses if you want to help bolster your response. Okay, I actually have more witnesses than what I brought. And <coughs> I actually have more witnesses than what I brought. Can I name them now? We excuse you and we go through the rest of the deliberation process. I actually have more witnesses than what I brought. Can I tell you who they are? Are they here? Yes. They certainly are. Jesus Christ is my first witness. Let's, let's use the witnesses that you brought. So Ooh, wait a minute. And these 12 men are my other witnesses. I have specific questions for them. Also, Brother Langford and Brother Call are my witnesses. I have questions for each one of them. I think you have seriously misunderstood what a disciplinary counsel is, Brother I think that you, as a as a representative of Jesus Christ, which I say tongue in cheek, would want to make sure that every witness speaks for me that can before you make some kind of a decision. They will. Good, then I will ask those questions as we go along. They're not going to uh, do that portion of the disciplinary council until we've asked you to leave and wait for our decision? Well, then I'll ask and they can be silent. Brother, you don't have to answer this question. Uh, Paul did say, it's in First uh, Peter chapter 3, that every follower of God will have a ready and reliable defense for the faith. That's all I'm going to ask about today. Do you men have a defense for your faith, or are you afraid to speak in, for Jesus Christ? Brother Earl, do you have any questions for these three witnesses? I do, and we'll get to those when I start my statement. Start your statement, just give me. Okay, I'm not limited to five minutes. I'm limited. I'm going to give my statement. It's going to take a little bit more than that. Uh, we'll see. We won't see. We will see. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, boy. 
uh, a life-changing decision based on these charges, which Garner's taken far more than five minutes to express, and yet he gives me five minutes, five minutes to make a point, to actually defend myself. The charge of apostasy is huge. It is huge. And uh, uh, for him to say that I can defend myself in five minutes, and that will be the end of it, is, is the action of a coward. And now let's turn our point, let's turn ourselves to apostasy. The questions were self-evident uh, by your answer. The questions I ask you may be an issue of apostasy. Absolutely not. There is no apostasy. There is no apostasy, and I'm prepared to defend that. It'll take more than five minutes, and, um, and uh, it's, it's going to be, the, the statement is going to be made either here or in front of a camera, in front of the building. And what I would like to do, Garn, and I'll be honest with you, is I would very much like to make my statement tonight and walk away and call this the end of it. But I will tell you this, that if I don't make my statement here tonight, and if I do make my statement out there in front of the camera, I will print the handbills. I've already walked this district once as a potential legislator, and I will go door to door, and it will be your children and your families who will bring answers to you that you can't answer without lying. So it's going to be tonight, or I will, I will settle according to my own terms. So we're done. We're done. We are done. We're done. I'm inviting you to step out. Your book says I have a right to make a statement. You, you did not. I have not even started my statement. Brother we're inviting you to step out. I'm going to make my statement. This is ridiculous that you won't allow me to make a statement unless I agree with you. We're not asking you to agree. We're asking you to step out. I get to make a statement. Allow me to make my statement. It's, it's, that is what it says in your book, that I get to make a statement. That I don't, it doesn't say that I have to do it in five minutes. It does not say that. What it says is that I get to make a statement, and in fact, it gives me two opportunities to make a statement. And I have not had even the five minutes that you initially gave. So if you would, I'd like you to go sit down and I will make my statement, and when I'm done, these men will every one be, be persuaded that I am not in apostasy. Brother Earl, please leave. I'd like to bear my testimony of Jesus Christ, first of all. My testimony is so amazing. I, <coughs> there was a period of time when Bishop Bart Ralphs gave me a, a gag order and told me that I could never ever right. speak we're, of the church again. Done, Wait a minute. And there was a very dark time because I had lost my Mormonism and I had not yet Mr. found Earl, Jesus Christ. I had not yet met Jesus Christ. And the, po the one point I want you to make, that I want to make, because I'm obviously not going to get to make the rest, that Jesus Christ that I met is bigger and wider and deeper and more full of love than you can ever comprehend as Mormons. You cannot do that. And Kirk and I spoke in my yard a few days ago, and there were so many questions that he could not respond to, because Jesus Christ is real. And I have more joy and more hope and more love and more life in my life than ever I could have imagined. I am not guilty of apostasy, and I can go point by point through the scripture, through your own Mormon doctrine, and then we can visit LDS.org. Yeah, uh, uh, and that is my testimony to you, brethren. If you want to know the truth, read the Bible with the eyes of a child, and God, Jesus, will reveal himself to you. He will reveal himself to you, and I promise you, Mr. I Earl, promise you that your life will change. And I'm, le right now. I'm leaving. Thank you. Who are you? My name is Glenn Anderson. The, the, the state bully? No, sir. I, I, you know, I came here with no anticipation that I'd be able to make this statement. I knew that I wouldn't. And it's not a surprise. And so I am, I am leaving now. But I will make the statement, and I promise you that I will deliver it to this entire state and your children and your families. They will come to you and they will ask you questions that you can't answer unless you lie. Brother Earl, it's my responsibility to tell you that you no longer are allowed on church property. You send me a restraining order and until I get it, there is nothing legal. You see, the thing about Garn Lovell is he Mr. likes Earl, to... Let's go. Shut up!
Is he right? likes to stand in Please front right and now. step in place of Jesus Christ and in right. place of the law to Mr. issue Earl, gag orders and to, to tell me I can't come here because I'm still a member in good standing, aren't I? I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Right